Hey guys, not so back with you for part two of the air to ground radar uh, video tu tutorial. We uh, talked about uh, the RBM radar in part one. That's the real beam map radar, and you can see that's up here uh, in the um, uh, left uh, MPD on the pilot side. Uh, today we're going to talk about the GMT or the ground moving target uh, radar mode. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a little bit of a scenario here. Uh, we're out in uh, the very western part of Iraq uh, doing a, 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 a old traditional uh, old school scud hunt in uh, Desert Storm. So uh, we're looking for a, um, uh, a scud uh, tail out in, uh, out in the desert. Intel has said that they're uh, uh, in a three vehicle convoy, so one scud and a couple support vehicles, uh, and they're running uh, in between uh, H3 and H3 Southwest. And that was from a, a British uh, SAS team that they got eyes on uh, leaving the airfield. So we're going to uh, go in and I'll introduce some of the, the radar modes for the GMT. And then we'll go in and see if we can find these, uh, find the SCUD and um, uh, idea. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I'll go back into the, in the back office, which is where all the fun stuff happens. So right now we're, uh, we're all set up. Uh, I'm going to uh, Go ahead and uh, zoom in here just a little bit more just so we can uh, get a little bit better picture of what's going on. So again, right now, like I talked about, we're in the RBM mode. So everything starts here. Pretty much every air-to-ground radar mode always starts in the RBM. And that think of that as your gateway to, the, to any of the other modes. So uh, just down here at PB6, we're going to click into um, uh, GMT. And you're going to see that uh, hue in right here. So... The, going around the radar, it look, it's pretty much exactly the same as in your part one. So azimuth and range to the cursor. So if I move the cursor around, you can see the azimuth range change. I can declutter some of the symbology on there, basically just the target symbology and the, uh, the north arrow. Uh, what's new here is now we have an elevation, um, kind of like a bar setup similar to the air to air radar where I can uh, change it from a single scan I'll get into that here in a second. So you basically uh, one, two, three, or four bar uh, in there, and uh, and it will scan different things. I'll show you that here in just a second. You don't notice the the little uh, up and down arrows for the um, the gain uh, go away because there is no gain. You're basically looking at just uh, raw returns for any kind of moving target, and there's no background uh, data or no background map. So you, there's really nothing to to gain up or down. Same thing, the, the, the gain is, uh, is gone there from the RBM. All the same stuff applies down here. So uh, you notice you've got Q. And again, I can uh, hotas this in the back seat, unlike in the front seat where I have to actually use the button. So if you remember, you use the uh, castle switch. So left is toggle between Q and mark. So I'll leave it in Q. Aft is target. Forward is map and uh, and that's it. So nothing really for the right. So I'm going to leave it on Q because that's what we're going to try to do is if we find any uh, moving target symbology out there, I'm going to cue the air to ground. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to cue the target pod uh, to that spot. Uh, over on the right side, notice that the, there is no um, beyond 40 mile range because the uh, GMT is limited to um, only 32 miles, and you can see uh, that here. So that's a good segue. So I can go down in range, but I can only go up to 40 miles. There's no scope uh, beyond that. So what I want to show you is um, on the um, uh, RBM, or I'm sorry, on the GMT, the little uh, balls here are the min and max coverage of the GMT coverage in, uh, in one bar elevation. And then, so that's the, that's the furthest it's going to see, and this is the minimum that it'll look at. And these little asterisks that are scanning back and forth, those, that's actually the sweep of the GMT coverage. So you can see it going back and forth. It's basically going out to 32 miles and down here to about, uh, what would that be? Um, uh, something less, so pretty much right to, um, uh, what is that, about 10 miles, a little bit, a little bit more than 10 miles, about 12 miles. Um, if I change the, the, the bar scan elevation, so if I go to a two bar, it's going to start at the nearest, and it's going to cover roughly about half of the scope, and then it's going to overlap all, all the way out to the front, and it'll just alternate back and forth. So you can see there's the, the near one, and then it'll alternate 
a little bit further out. If I go to a three bar scan, it'll do the same thing. It'll start at the nearest and then work its way out. And then eventually it'll overlap out to the far one. And then if I do a four bar scan, uh, same thing, it'll go all the way out. Where this uh, bar elevation really comes in is if I'm trying to search in a really narrow area, um, it will actually give you more coverage and I'll show you here in just a second. So one final thing is, let me go back to uh, one bar elevation, it'll make more sense. The, the radar antenna tilt is the same thing as it is in RBM. If you remember, it's half action in on the trigger and then it's TDC uh, up or down on the thing. So notice it's only gonna go out to uh, 32 miles, but as I hold half action trigger, then I can move the, the scan down to, uh, to narrow that in. Where, this, where the elevation is gonna come into play, the, the bar elevation is, uh, if I scan out, notice the, the azimuth gets wider as I get closer in range. So I can actually scan a narrower area or a wider area as I bring the elevation uh, antenna tilt down. So you can see if I go back to um, one bar elevation, the, the scan actually gets narrower uh, as we go in. I'll do that one more time. So as I go out to four bar, see how it widens out, and then I can adjust that a little bit further out to get a little bit better coverage. Cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to one bar elevation, and we'll use that for the rest of the time, and then I will go ahead and uh, take it off of a uh, pause, and now we're going to start looking for something out there. So notice uh, steer point two is, uh, I'll, I'll bounce out to the front seat. Steer point uh, two is 43 miles away, so that's well outside the, uh, the coverage of the, of the radar. So I'll take it off of uh, active pause. So we're flying now, and I'll jump back into the back seat. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking for uh, any kind of scan, uh, any kind of uh, uh, contacts out there as we, uh, as we fly forward. Notice we're on uh, autopilot right now, so the airplane's just gonna fly itself for the, for the moment. So remember the brief, we're looking for a, um, a, a human intel set of three vehicle convoy. Um, so we're starting to get a hit out here, so the, the, the crosses are where the radar is starting to detect uh, any kind of um, movement out there. So if you remember from RBM, I can freeze the scan with the, uh, the pinky switch on the stick. So I'll go ahead and do that, so I'll scan, I'll freeze it, and then I will uh, go ahead and um, get the crosshairs over that spot so it's not moving. I'll go full action in on the trigger, we'll command the Q, and that should move the target pod over to that spot. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll take it off of uh, freeze now that it's um, uh, queued over there, and I'll go ahead and uh, uh, zoom in to the, uh, to the area. Realize that we're, uh, we're still 19 miles out, so we may or may not say anything. It looks like I'm just starting to see something uh, right here under the, um, and that's just barely starting to get broken out. So I'll, I'll wait till we're a little bit closer. Notice we're also getting another uh, moving target hit out here, but I'm gonna leave that for now until uh, I get a, a better idea of what's under, uh, under this. So it looks like I've got a much larger convoy. So obviously a lot bigger than, uh, than those three vehicles, so I can pretty much ignore this one uh, in there. I'll go ahead and go to uh, Black Hot and see if that helps. And move the coverage down. Yep, you can see I've got a, a, a probably, I don't know, we can count it, but probably 10 vehicles or so. So we can pretty much ignore that one. That's not our target, so we're gonna move on to something else. So now what I wanna do is go back and take command of the air to ground radar. In the rear seat, it's uh, Cooley uh, left on the right hand controller since I'm taking the, the right um, uh, MPD. So now what I wanna do is I wanna move my, my scan down so I can start getting a little bit better hit on, the, uh, on this guy. Notice I can even go into a, uh, like a half scan and see if I can get a little bit faster update rate. I could even go into a quarter scan and get a really fast update. Notice the, the scan will, will follow the target. So I'm gonna move the coverage down, that way I get always keep it within the uh, the scan. I'm gonna go freeze once I get something frozen. And I will uh, go ahead, I'm gonna put it on uh, pause for a minute so I don't overfly these guys. So now they're getting in, into the 13 mile range and I'll see if I can get a uh, good look at this guy. 
my uh, TDC is a little sensitive. I need to work on that. So I'll go full action trigger. I'll go ahead and see if I can start finding something in the uh, target pod. And I'm not seeing anything yet. I may have waited a little too long to uh, freeze it. Let's try that again. Let's go back over. I'll unfreeze it. And this is where I'm going to go into a uh, uh, probably like a four bar. Just so I get a little bit wider uh, scan there. So there's my uh, target. I'll go ahead and cue again. So there's full action trigger. And again, it's just a, a repetitive process. Okay. Looks like I'm getting something in the in the target pod screen right now. So uh, we'll go ahead and zoom in on that guy. And yep, I'm going to go ahead and take it off pause as so we can fly a little bit closer as we um, and I'll, I'll continue to take this off of um, scan here. Looks like a little bit smaller convoy or single vehicle. And as we get closer, we'll see if we can break out what that guy is. I'll go to uh, back to white hot. Again, it's just, it's just a, a process of elimination of what you like best. There's no right or wrong. Let's see if we can find this guy. So, yeah, it looks like I'm starting to break this out, and we are now starting to get a, uh, a little bit better break out of this convoy. So nine miles out. Again, uh, land and pod don't expect a, a miracle in terms of resolution on this guy. And uh, let me go to expand and see if that will help a little bit as I get a little bit closer. Yeah, there we go. So now we're, uh, we're getting a little bit closer. I'll put active pause back on so we don't overfly it. And like I said, the intel says that it was uh, two uh, trucks and a scud launcher. So yeah, it looks like we, this might be our guy. So I'll go back, back out so we can um, see the, uh, the, this guy. So we're still getting the, uh, the good hits here. They come into the target pod again, and it looks like it may be a scud in the uh, the rear of this three vehicle convoy. Looking pretty good, so I will uh, I'll go ahead and take it off of uh, pause. I'll get the airplane uh, headed that way and see if we can get a final ID. Notice we're still at five and a half miles, and the the resolution kind of looks like ass, but that's pretty much expected with a, uh, a lantern pod. All right, so yeah, I'm pretty confident that, that is my scud. So there's how I'm using uh, the GMT mode to uh, find guys out in the desert. And it works pretty well. So again, note the limitations on this. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, active pause on. Limitations are uh, you pretty much are only going to be able to use it in a, uh, in a kind of open area. If I've got a ton of civilian traffic, uh, it's going to be really hard to uh, break out individual targets. You're just going to have to use the target pod to, to just trial and error and try to see if you can find what you're looking for. Okay, so I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to end it here. And what we'll do next is I'll jump into a, a different scenario where we've got a, uh, a lot of civilian traffic turned on. And that way you can see the difference between uh, open area desert with just some uh, military moving targets and a uh, civilian uh, and a whole bunch of clutter with civilian targets on. So I'll go ahead and end here. Okay, so we've jumped into a slightly different scenario. We're back into the same one that we did for the RBM. So we're off the coast of Beirut uh, in the uh, RBM map in the back seat. So what I'm going to show you now is I've got civilian traffic turned on to medium. Notice this is medium, not high. Uh, and now we're going to jump into the, uh, what the GMT looks like. So you're going to see a whole bun bunch of, uh, of uh, raw returns here on the coastline if I'm just in GMT. So essentially what you're going to see. Uh, out here, a little bit of ship traffic, uh, but primarily you can see it kind of follows the edge of the coastline around, and that is in medium, and that's why I said earlier that GMT in a, in a really busy city is going to not really be of much value to you. Sure, I can see moving targets, but there's so many, I have no idea exactly what I'm looking for. Um, you would have to have some really good intel in terms of where to focus your scan to look for something. But you could if you want, so we can, uh, we can test this out. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, uh, and cue the target pod to something up here along the coast. And uh, notice it's a ton of scans. And notice the, the scan is, is being erased as it goes because it has a minimum of, of 100, I'm sorry, it has a max of 100 targets it'll display. And then if it has more than that, it'll erase the oldest returns as it goes. So that's one of the reasons why 
you're seeing the, the scan being erased as we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and freeze. Just to show you that, I'll go ahead and cue. Go full action on the trigger. And you can see now we've basically uh, zoomed into the uh, coastline. There's probably a coastal highway along there. Yep, I can definitely see that. There's the coastal highway. There also may be some ship traffic uh, a little bit in the, in the water, but uh, really what we're seeing is this coastal highway. Again, not a ton of utility. Um, so I'll go ahead and go back and take that off freeze. Again, remember freeze is the pinky switch in the front seat, sorry, rear seat. Uh, freeze is the left multifunction switch or the laser fire button in the front seat on the throttle um, for that. So again, you can see we're basically looking at the, uh, at the coastline. So if I go back out, let me go back to an RBM and I'll show you one final thing with GMT uh, on there. So there's your RBM scan back. Um, so one thing we didn't talk about yet was the, this IGMT, which, is, which stands for an interleaved GMT with, a, with an RBM. So it's interleaved, one scan of GMT, one scan of, of RBM sweep. And this is now where it's gonna overlay the, those crosses onto the map of the, um, uh, of the ground. So this may have a little bit better utility if you're looking in uh, somewhere that has some very unique geographic features. Again, the reason I didn't use that in that earlier scenario with the scuds out in the middle of the desert is you wouldn't have seen anything. It would have just been bland desert. So having the, uh, the RBM map under it really doesn't do you any good. The only time that really helps is if you're looking for, um, again, unique geographic features. If I knew that there were moving targets along a ridge line, then yeah, I might start using this interleaved GMT to uh, start looking at stuff. An example of that, as you can see, we take command of the um, uh, RBM again. So like if I knew that there was a, I, this shadow right here tells me that there's a, a ridge line. So I might be looking for a moving target along that ridge line, but I'm just gonna show you the IGMT just to show you what it looks like when I select it. So now we have the same stuff back again with the overlay of the, um, the RBM map in the background. So you're gonna still see all the same images. Uh, and again, this is where, hey, maybe, uh, maybe I'm looking for a moving target in this little harbor so I can narrow my, my focus down to just look. So we'll do that with the quarter scan. And remember the, the quarter scan follows the cursor. And now I'm just looking for stuff like in that little harbor. Uh, and again, this is maybe one way that I can use the, the scan for that. So these are all the features of the GMT. Uh, again, um, it has limited utility. Uh, we never really used it in any kind of a buildup area just because of the, the amount of civilian traffic, uh, unless it was, you know, in a, in a war-torn, uh, uh, scorched earth sort of uh, scenario where there, you don't expect any civilian traffic be going on and this way you might be able to use it in a, in a town where I know that only the stuff moving should be uh, military stuff. Um, but in this case, I, I don't have the ability to simulate that. That would be more real life, present day stuff. Anyway, so uh, this is it. This is uh, not so uh, talking about GMT. Uh, next time we'll do the, uh, the HRM map. I know everybody's anticipating that, but I wanted to leave that till last. So we'll do that HRM in part three and I'll combine that with the PVU because PVU and HRM pretty much goes hand in hand. Okay, not so out for uh, GMT part two. Talk to you guys later.